Jupyter Notebooks are simply a web interactive notebooks which you can use to do some computing. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create notebooks by using AWS SageMaker. As you can see, I am already logged into my AWS account. Plus, I have already selected AWS SageMaker as my service. And right now, I am in the AWS SageMaker console. On the left hand side in the menu, you will see there is a notebook item. Under the notebook item, we have notebook instances. Now, on the right hand side, click on the orange button, create notebook instance. Once you create, click on this button, you will be presented with this screen where you just have to fill out few of the values in order to create your notebook. The first thing is the notebook instance name. You can assign any name here. I will just call it new LLM. And then for the instance type, if you are going to run large language models or testing them out locally, then I always suggest that you start with G4 TN X large instance because it has one GPU and it is sufficient enough for small to medium size LLMs. So I selected G4 DN X large and the pricing for this instance is around under $1 per hour US dollars. Then keep this Amazon Linux 2 Jupyter Lab 3 as default because uh, you don't have to change it. It is quite stable. In the additional configuration, if you want to specify the size of this Jupyter Lab, because normally the LLMs you download, their data sets are quite large. So depending upon your data set, which you intend to download, I would highly suggest you go in and change this volume and GB size so that you don't run out of your space. Leave everything else on default. Now, if you are using this AWS Jupyter Notebook first time, then you would need to create a role. So just click uh, here, create role using the role creation wizard and simply next, next, and it will create the default role. And that should be sufficient enough. I already have it, so I it is already selected by default. And then leave everything else as optional. There is also a Git repository one, but we will do it later. Now just click on create notebook instance and it will start creating your notebook instance. And normally it takes around four to five minutes if you are using G4DN instance. So wait for it to finish. Okay, as you can see that our notebook instance is ready with this new LLM. You can simply select open Jupyter Lab. I always prefer to open it with Jupyter Lab instead of Jupyter because Jupyter Lab is more graphical, more easier to use. So click on it and it will go to a new tab and load this our new notebook instance in this Jupyter Lab environment. First time it takes few seconds because it is loading, just initializing it and all that stuff. So wait for it to load. Shouldn't take too long. Okay, so you can see that it has loaded here. Now, the great thing about this is that it already gives you a lot of pre-built notebooks, templates, or kernel engines. I, if I'm going to build the LLMs, I always go with Conda underscore Python 3. So I'll click on it because it comes with a lot of pre-installed stuff and I don't have to do it again. So this is what we are presented with. So a notebook is ready. Now let me give you a quick uh, rundown of what you can do with it. For example, if you want to run any shell commands, you can run with ls-ltr. And with, because we are not in the shell environment exactly, so you have to put exclamation mark before these commands. Click on play or control enter. You can go do either. So this has written as fine. For example, if you want to install any Python package, again, exclam exclamation mark pip install such as, let's say, pandas. Control, I'll, I'm pressing control enter here. Now you see that there is a steric in this scare brackets. It means that this is running. Once it's finished processing, this steric will turn into a number. And because this is a number two command, so it has turned into number two, it says that it has finished running, which is good. Okay, now you can run any other command too. 
I will call it maybe <clears throat> not sure if this will work or not. Let's check. Okay, yeah, it works. So it has given us some of the processes running in our environment. One more cool thing about this is that if you look on the left hand side, you will see there's a git icon. Click on it, and here you can simply click on clone a repo. And then if you want to download any public repository, you can simply give it a URL here and click on clone and it will clone that uh, repo here. Also, you can initialize the repo. There are a few other tools too, but these are the ones which you'll be mainly using. And if you want to restart your environment, all you need to do is to click on this on the top menu bar. There is this icon, the round arrow one where you can click and it will restart your kernel. So just click on it and it will be the or if you restarted your variables will be lost and you have to reinitialize them by exporting or whatever. So it has restarted. Uh, and you can see that at the bottom it says fully initialized. So that's it. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, one tip when you are once you are done with it, make sure to delete this notebook from here or at least stop it so that AWS won't charge you for it. I hope that you liked it. If you did, uh, please consider subscribing to the channel and putting in feedback in the comment section. Thank you very much.